That can be in there. That can be in there. That ain't gonna hurt. So, good evening, everyone. How are we doing? <laughs> good evening. We're trying to figure out what we do. I'm trying to figure you out. You trying to figure out what you do? I was going to add my phone to the live stream. Are you doing your phone? Nope. I got. It. Well, okay, I'm gonna do my phone then. Just sit right down there. Okay. Should I do it this way? Yeah. You okay. Do it Good evening, everyone. We had to start all over. My wife is <laughs> getting ready, as a woman does. Getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Are you ready? That's ready. that's the question. I'm are born you ready? ready? Hey, oh, you born ready? Miss Love, right. how are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. It is two minutes after the hour, and we thank God that you desire to fellowship with us on tonight for date night with William and Wendy. We are excited. It is April 6th. It seemed like, no, it's a man. It's May 6th. It seems like April was longer than any month. I don't know why, but it seemed like we were in April for a long time. Right. I enjoyed the month of April. I was busy, 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 and I had a great month. So maybe that's why it seemed like April was really long, because I did a lot of traveling in the month of April. Mr. John Reed, how you doing, sir? Hello. I'm glad y'all joined us on tonight. Hope it's a nice sunny day where you're at. It just started storming down here in South Carolina. So... We're going hey, to let me put rain. my dis let me put my disclaimer on this thing now. I had nothing to do with the subject title. I didn't I didn't know what it was until my wife posted it. <laughs> posted it. But the last time we met, you said something about my rain, and I, you said it's bigger, better. I said, hey, that is a good subject for the month of May. So we're talking about it's bigger, better. It's bigger, better. What do you oh, think? You said size, the size matter. Oh, I'm sorry. Does size matter? Okay. Does si I'm sorry. Does size matter? I haven't changed it all together. Does size matter? So, meaning big, small, medium, does size matter? So, we're going to talk about that tonight, but first we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this time of fellowship, fun, and enjoyment, Father God, to be with you and to be with others. Lord, we pray that this word and message that you give to us to entertain and, and, and bring enlightenment to relationships will help others, Lord. And we thank you and praise you for the time that we're, we'll, we will spend in your presence and with your people, Lord. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Give me that pen so I don't write down the wrong thing every time. So today we're going to talk about does size matter? Does size Go, Scott. matter? And the reason why... I wanted to talk about that. I thought it would be a great subject because a lot of times people uh, determine their blessings on how big something is and, and how great it is. And when God works with sm in small numbers as well as big numbers, I want people to understand you bless whether the item is in a small amount or whether it's in a big amount. If God blessed you with it, he is blessing you in everything that he does. So that reminds me of the scripture that if you're faithful over the little, he'll make you ruler over the much. You got this little beat up car and you taking care of it, you cleaning it, you washing it, you making sure it's got gas and it's running right and you're getting the oil changed and, you, and you're being faithful over that little. It says over the little. You're faithful over the little, little, God will make you ruler over the much. That means God can trust you with some big things. God can trust you with some things because he can trust you with the little. So are you going to be faithful to the little so God can bless you with the much? By the way, that's a nice big hat you got there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What size is that hat? Size you like? <laughs> uh, it's a large. I, to, I would probably wear extra small then, right? <laughs> According to your head. <laughs> well, that is a nice hat. I like it. Yeah. Like, would, you, you threw Curtis, my guard. Courtesy of our son. Courtesy of our son. Make He's sure good. his dad looks good. He looks good on you, too. I like it. I like it. You yeah. surprised me. You surprised me when I came down and saw you with the hat on. But we want to understand how wonderful it is to acknowledge God in the little as well as the big. Acknowledge who he is. Meaning testify. And many times you'll say, I go to church. Don't nobody testify anymore. 
We still testify at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry because yes, we want people to understand how big God is. So in that sense, yes, size matter. I need a big God. I got to make sure God is out of the box. Sometimes I keep God in the box because I'm comfortable where I'm at. But we got to remember God is a big God. Let him out the box and let him be a blessing to you. No matter what the size is, God is blessing no matter what. But do we understand our blessings when we get it? You know, when people uh, get something small, they're, they're sometimes embarrassed. They don't want to share. When really, God is seeing how you're going to react to the small. But, now, go ahead. Yeah, but with God, our faith, it, it, it does matter. Mm -hmm. Because in, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, he said, he replied, because you have so little faith. So he talks about people with little faith, mm -hmm. but he says, truly, I tell you, if you have a uh, faith as small as a mustard seed, right. you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. But it, mm -hmm. So there is a such thing as small faith and big faith in God. That's true. Because if that it wasn't true. so, he wouldn't have said, you, uh, you have little faith. So what he said, you can start off with little faith, and we talk about this in church all the time. We talk about, yeah, the, the mustard seed is so small that you you couldn't see it if I held it in my finger like this. But the thing is, mustard seed doesn't stay small. That's right. It, it grows and becomes huge and large. That's so, take hold a little and make you rule over it. It eventually, your faith is going to eventually grow. I'm sorry, I didn't even cut you're you right. off. Yes, if you didn't mean to cut me <laughs> off, you wouldn't have did it. Don't so, don't you you cut me off. <laughs> so, so I don't forgot what I was saying. Now go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. So God works in small numbers as well as blessing you with the big. So He starts off with this little mustard seed, but then He talks about a mountain. A mountain is huge. It's big. He says you can move with that little bitty a mustard seed. You can move this great big gigantic mountain. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know that all you need is a little bit of faith to move something that's something that's so huge and so big. God works. Where you're at, wherever you're at, that's where God's going to work at. I can't see who that is. They said they didn't. Renee Kathy, hi. Oh, okay. I have been, been, with, my been husband. with my husband for 13 years and many more years. I love the relationship you have. You both have. Thank you so Amen. much. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you. I love you, and I appreciate you joining us on tonight. I remember all of us at Bookville High School together and Perkins, and, and uh, Renee was always such a uh, nice person, always sweet. Thank you for joining us on tonight. God bless you and your husband. Continue to be blessed. Hey, Galena, thank you for joining us on tonight. Oh, I, we was waiting on a comment from D, but it never came. <laughs> <laughs> we probably wouldn't want a comment from D. <laughs> it's a good thing it probably never came, right, D? <laughs> right, right? But... <laughs> Back to it, it was saying so. So when you when we when you came up with this question, mm -hmm. what literally were you? What was the mindset you were talking about when you said the size matter? Because I came up with that because many times people, like I said earlier, uh, come to the conclusion that God is blessing them when He gives them big, when He gives them much Only bigger, when he give them right? Big. When He gives them. Big, big ticket items, big expensive items, large items. If you can't be content with something small, like a smaller house, a 700-foot um, square home, um, then are you going to be content with a 7,000-square-foot home? Oh. So can you be content with whatever God gives you? Can you thank him for what he's already given you so that when he gives you bigger, when he gives you more, you'll be even more thankful. Because sometimes what happens is people get more and they're ungrateful. Right. They feel like God owes them something. They feel like man owes them something. I've had a hard life as I was growing up. You owe me, you owe me, you owe me. So they're miserable and mad with everybody because they really haven't got what they felt like they should have gotten okay. over the years. So what I was talking about was being grateful no matter where you're at in your life. No matter where you're at, whether it's big things or the small things, and we really decide if we're blessed by what somebody else has. Well, they've got this. I should have this by now, too. They're the same age as, they, as I am. Why don't I have a, an abundance like they do? Don't decide. Don't uh, dictate how blessed you are by the amount of items that you have, by the size of the items you have. I talk Sorry, about... Oh, go I ahead. I to interrupt this. Uh, go ahead. I'm not going to interrupt because I got a well, lot to say. But go or ahead. even... Don't measure your blessing according to the size of somebody else's blessing. Exactly, exactly. And that's what happens. That's where jealousy comes in. That's yeah. where strife comes in. That's 
you stay in your lane. And Whatever God has for you is yeah, for you. That's it. And that's why God said, I mean, that's why the word says to everyone, there's a measurement of faith. Mm -hmm. So we, you get according to your faith anyway. Mm -hmm. how, 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 how your faith want to bring it in? How, how large is your faith to receive something from God? Exactly. Exactly. And you got to be patient. You got to right. wait. Right. You have to wait on the Lord. What God has blessed us with as far as a marriage for 36 years, we had to wait. It wasn't something that happened overnight. We started off small and we ended up big according to what God has entrusted us with. A ministry is big. I don't care if you got 20 people in the house at, in the sanctuary or if you got 5,000 people in the sanctuary. It's big because you have to be a people person. You have to be a nice person. You have to be a friendly person. You have to be a person that's approachable. You have to be a person that's lovable and love to love on other folks no matter what they're looking like. Whether they're rolling their eyes or they're smiling at you, you have to be that person that wants to love no matter what. So this is big. Doing ministry is big to me. I, I enjoy what God has blessed us with, but he couldn't have given us this in our 20s. We wasn't ready. No. We wasn't ready, for sure, because you, you didn't want to be bothering folks half the no. time. No, no <laughs> right. I didn't. You were nice, but you didn't want to be bothered all the time. Right. Unless it was a sporting event, William didn't want to be bothered with folks. Yeah. So he couldn't give us what he wanted to give us until the time came. He knew by the time we got in our middle 40s, we were ready. Right. And you remember you kept asking me, are you going to be ready for ministry? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm born ready. I've been going to church ever since I was knee high. But that's, it. That was, you know, like I said, that was a difference. You mm -hmm. going to church since you was knee high and, and being the one that God has placed to be under shepherd over the ministry is totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it was nothing that you can say that you were born ready for. I was born ready. <laughs> Because God, had, no, you wasn't. Because he didn't. He wasn't ready. To, if you were born ready, you would have been in a ministry and in a church. You just said that we wasn't ready in the twenties for. You had to get you ready. I, know I, I was, was ready. ready. You wasn't ready. I was ready. You wasn't ready, you wasn't ready either. <laughs> Cuckoo for cocoa. You wasn't ready. I was ready. I, no, seriously, I, I'm ready. I, I'm ready now right. that I'm older for real. Right. Because right. even though um, I've said I was you know, in the church since I was knee high, I didn't want to be um, full-time ministry with kids. That's just me. I, I wanted our kids to be older and pretty much an adult by the time we went into ministry um, full-time. Right. That was just me. That was my prayer. And God answered my prayer. He allowed us to um, wait till our children got older, and then we got to go into ministry uh, full-time. So right. I, know I, was, I know I'm ready because the kids are grown and we're able to do this full force, no interruptions, no kids in the house, and we're able to bless other people. And like I said earlier, don't determine how blessed you are by how big your, your gift is or how much you have in your possession. Know that you're blessed because you're able to see, walk, talk, hear. You're able to eat. Somebody didn't wake up today. Know that you're blessed because God allowed you to see a new day. Don't determine how blessed you are by the size of something. I always use this as an example, this ring and this ring here, these two rings here. Pastor uh, Campbell decided at our 20th anniversary, it was time to get something bigger. Time to upgrade. I was fine. I was fine with my, my ring. I was fine. You want to tell me how much you paid for this ring back in the day? No. Okay. Well, anyway, so um, he kept saying, don't you want another ring? I said, I am content. I'm not a jewelry person. And I worked, I was a supervisor in the jewelry counter for years. But I'm not a jury person, which is great because when I put the jury out and I looked at the jury and I cleaned the jury, I wasn't phased by it at all. I had 5,000 rings, 6,000 rings, 7,000 rings, beautiful rings, but it didn't catch my eye. It, it, it could have been costume jewelry. I'd have been just fine because whatever's cute and shiny and sparkly is cute to me. It doesn't matter how much it costs. It doesn't matter how big it is. So what I'm saying is it is the thought that counts. When I see uh, young couples come to the jury counter back in the day, they would come to the jury counter and the girl would want, the young lady would want the biggest ring in the case. He couldn't afford it. Now you're making the brother go broke before y'all even get married. It is the thought that counts. Let him pick it out. If you just must pick it out, ask him what your you know, budget is. What, we're going, what, what, what can we afford right now? Don't go broke so you can share on Facebook or so you can show off at work. Get what it is he has for you and be blessed by what he thought you should have. But not many people want to do that these days because you got to show something off. You, you got to be able to say, hey, bigger is better. Bigger is better. 
And if that's not the case, know that God is the one that does the blessing. And if you do it on your own, it usually turns into a mess. So you might as well wait on God. You might as well wait and see what he has for you so that he can be a blessing to you and that you in return can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. You shouldn't go into a marriage right off the bat and broke because you had to pay for this expensive wedding. You had to pay for this expensive ring. You had to pay for this expensive uh, honeymoon. Get a budget. Whatever your budget is, don't go over it. And if one of you are... Um, it's, uh, that type of shopper that can't stop, you, you don't know when to say no, then let the one that knows how to say no and keep the budget friendly. Uh, you know, maybe lose my co my <laughs> concentration. And who knows how to be budget friendly, let them be the one in control or over the um, finances so that you both don't go broke. Because if both of y'all like to shop like crazy, it's just not good. It's just not good. So I know you got something to say now. You don't. All right. I want you to um, go with me to Acts 3.26. When God raised up his servant, Jesus, he sent him first to you, people of Israel, to bless you by turning each of you back from sinful ways. God wants you to turn to him. If getting more is causing you to sin, it's time to leave it alone. Is bigger or better? No, not if it's causing you to sin. It's bigger, better, no, if it's causing you to treat people wrong because you think you're better than them, because you got more than them, or because you got an account that's 10 times bigger than what they have. So no, is bigger, better? No, bigger isn't better when you don't use it in the right way. Does size matter? No, size doesn't matter. But you got to do the right thing with what you got. Be faithful over the look. Little, so little, can work, so he can make you ruler work, over the much. Work what you got. Huh? Work what you got. Work what you got. That, that, that's a good word. And I like this one in Numbers 6 and 24 and through, um, through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's Numbers 26, number 6, 24 and 26. So look. God's going to bless you where you're at. Quit trying to get where somebody else is at and get yours. Quit trying to be where somebody else is and concentrate on what you have. What God has for you is for you. Whatever the job is, whatever the house is, whatever the car is, whatever the finances is, whatever it is for you, God's already got you. You got to seek him and find out what exactly he wants for you. What he, does he have for this spouse that's coming your way? Are you seeking God on who you should marry? If you're single, do you want to be married? Some people just don't want to be married. Maybe they want to be single. So if that's the case, okay, you don't get to have the benefits of what a married couple has. You know what I'm talking about, I think, right? If you're single, then you don't get any. You don't get any. It's called none. That's why they're called nuns. You don't get none. You don't get to have what married folks have if you like to be single. But if you desire to be married, hey, God. I, I desire to be married, and if, as a woman, you will say, who you have for me, I'm waiting patiently. I hear women say all the time, I'm looking for a man. No, first of all, he who finds a wife findeth a good thing. That means the man should be seeking the woman, but you got to be found. You got to be able to be found. Present yourself. Present yourself. You got to be presentable. Do you want to be found, or do you want to be the chaser? Do you, do you, yeah, do you, do you well, want to be the chaser? That's what they do in this society now. And why, you wonder why you have so many problems and issues in relationships. Mm -hmm. Because the women are doing the chasing. They got, they got it backwards. That's true. According That's true. to scripture, you have it backwards. Listen, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Jeremiah 17 and 7. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Either you're going to trust God or you're not. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're in, sometimes you're out. You, does size matter? The size of your faith. God isn't measuring your blessings by the size of your faith, but what he is doing is seeing if you're going to be faithful over the little so that he can make you ruler over the much. See, the problem is too many test drives going on. That happens. That happens. And then the relationship doesn't last long because what? When you finally find the right one, the size is not what you want now. 
because you didn't test drove all the bigger cars instead of now you got an economy car that's taking care of you better than any larger car. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. I can I got you. Keep, right. Keeping it rated PG, I appreciate that. So the size matter. Does size matter? Well, depends on the person, it right? Depends on that's what I was gonna say. Depends on the individual. Okay. How they right. how they want. But if we go according to the scripture, that's not necessarily matter. But watch this. If we up talking about your faith, your faith in the kingdom does matter. It does. Yeah. Faith so, is what's gonna carry you through it all. Right. So like everything else that that lays out or that is portrayed in scripture was what fits the individual according to God's plan for their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, can, you can see you have so many people argue different things. Well, I have to have size and I have to have this. And some people say, well, as long as I'm happy and I'm and it's pleasing to me, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. This the individual. This is true. And so once again, if you're test driving all the time, then you got all these spirits yeah. attached to you. You don't wear them parts out. Well, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, okay. And the thing is, then you've got all these spirits attached to you, and what happens is you can't figure out why you're not content. Right. Because you're going to and fro, you're wishy-washy, one day you're up, one day you're down. Like I said early, one day you're in, one day you're out. Because now you've got to detach. You got to get delivered from all of what has attached itself to you. And a lot of people don't understand it. That. That's even with um, talking about um, astrology. You know, people want to know their, what is zodiac? The other thing, the other thing, all these things that you attach yourself to, you don't realize you're taking that into the relationship, which isn't good. You don't want to take things like that into the relationship with you. Does size matter? That's and it was a good question. Mm -hmm. You know, we could you could have went so many different ways with that, right? But with mindset, and I, you know, jokingly, you know, I, I read what Christy said. I, I hope you talk about the size shoe, of the shoe. Shoe size. <laughs> I think we make our kids nervous. <laughs> yeah, <you> think? <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> you know what I like about Proverbs ten and twenty two? It says, "The blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and He adds no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord maketh one rich." And ask no sorrow. That means when you get what you have from God, it's a blessing from God. And you don't have to worry how it came. You don't have to explain how you got it. You just rejoice in the fact that God has blessed you with whatever he's blessed you with. The size and amount that he wants you to have. Exactly. Exactly. So I, you know, I'm just thankful that God allows us to come together on date night the first Friday of every month so that we can share something that will enlighten you and prayerfully help you in your relationships. Whether you're desiring to be in a relationship or whether you're already in a relationship right now and you want it to improve. I tell you for sure, if you put God first, it will continuously grow and succeed. You cannot fail with God. There is no failure in faith. When you have that faith, like Campbell said, the faith of a mustard seed, you can't go wrong. Carry it with you. Faith is something that you need daily. Keep it with you. You can't fail with faith. Right. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. It says, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. So what? Uh, listen, how 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 big is your faith? How much do you? How much faith do you have in God? How much you have faith in the things that God has placed in you is going to be able to elevate you or do the things that or accomplish the things that God has told you? How how great faith do you have? You gotta have big faith to do big things. God, that's good. You gotta have big faith to do big things. I'm gonna write that down. You gotta have big faith to do big things. You go ahead and talk about other things. Yeah. So how, how is your faith activated? How, what is your faith level in, in the things that God has for you? Let's look at um, another scripture. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28 says, Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your, re your request is granted. 
and her daughter was healed at that moment. So mm -hmm. let's look at let's let's look at this thing. So you have great faith and and you believe what you ask. And so you God said, I'm going to grant your request. And the daughter was healed. So a lot of us running around with this small size faith. Oh God, I hope I wish God would do this. I hope God can do this. You hope God can do it. God can do all things but fail you. So what you have to do is elevate your faith to understand what God is doing in your life and, and operate and walk in it. It's simple as scripture says. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. So because the, uh, the faith level is large. But you can, it, but you can start off that way. Right. But be, because they have great faith in there, God has granted the, the healing of somebody's daughter. Exactly. So it doesn't matter from what I understand, from what I read is, as long as you have faith, work with what you got. Wherever, whatever situation you find yourself in, work what you have and watch God work on your behalf. He just wants to see if you're going to use that faith that he's blessed you with. You have a measurement of faith. That means God has given us all a measurement of faith. Use what he's given you. Now, when you faith, you can't have fear. When you have faith, you cannot have fear. I'm going to say that again. When you have faith, you cannot walk in fear because you just discontinued what you believe God to do. Oh, I just prayed about God uh, working this thing out on my behalf. And then 10 minutes later, oh, but you know what? It's looking bad right now. Ain't nothing going to happen good. What happened to the faith? It, it dwindled down that quick. It dwindled down just that quick. Does size matter? God just wants you to have the size of a mustard seed. That's as small as you can possibly get. If you just have that, work with what you got. We can't, but I, I can't harp on this enough. I know mm -hmm. you, you keep saying, telling that, but you can't stay at the size of a, of a mustard seed. Call yourself a mature Christian. It has to grow mm -hmm. beyond a mustard seed at some point in your life. Okay. And okay. this is why it says great faith and large faith. And it goes on to say all this because you have to be able to move from, from, from hither to yon in this thing. You got to, you got to grow. If your faith stays inside of the mustard seed, that, that get, you're getting to the point where you're not trusting and believing God to move you beyond. Okay. All right. So how does one person go from a mustard seed to continue to continue to believe in, in God, continue to, to challenge yourself in the faith? I know you said earlier that be content where you are and you right. are. Right. But you know what I always say? I'm not I'm never, ever content where I am because I have so much more in, that God has want me to do. If I just will stay where, in my contentment. I won't be able to accomplish all the stuff that God want me to do or even be able to open enlarge my faith to trust him to take us to, to higher height. So I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I'm not happy. I'm not saying that that I, I'm grateful. Don't, not grateful, but the thing is I know my mission for God. So mine is not to stay at one point. I have to be uh, enlarge my territory. Pick, pick up some tempe, enlarge it. And so as I'm enlarging the tent pegs, I'm enlarging my faith. And then watch this. When I enlarge my faith from God, he will allow me to do more. He allows me to incorporate more people. So if I stay the same, just think out how many people that I missed out that God wanted me to touch in their in my lifetime. This is true. This so is that, true. That's, that's, that's the way I look at it. And that's the way I have to stay because I can't stay content. I always got to mm -hmm. move on. As God, and you see, and this is the key, mm -hmm. as God directs me to move on. Right. I don't move on just to be moving. Right, right. So that's because I keep it. you grounded because mm -hmm. if, if I didn't, you you do stuff quick, fast, and in a hurry. Well, that's why you're here. Right. I'm, just, I'm helping you. <laughs> I'm the one that has to keep somebody grounded, and that's somebody is you. So, yeah, that's but what see, But you see, that's the part, that, that's where we differ, too. Right. Because I, I tell you. I, I but I'm this, content. Well, I said this in the ministry. We're we're so far outside of the box. I don't know what a box is, but that's ministry for me. Mm -hmm. In the ministry, like you said, you're in the box, and you're getting challenged now to come out of that box. Right. Because right. and what the thing is, and you've always been like this. 
you like to be comfortable in things. You don't like exactly. to be uncomfortable. Exactly. Or I can I can be on the edge and be uncomfortable because mm -hmm. I, I know by faith that is God that's directed. So right. I, I don't right. I don't stay in that box. I have to get outside of that box because of the faith that I have in. Not saying that you don't have it, but mm -hmm. you don't move out on it enough. Mm -hmm. You can you can say that. I, I know. <laughs> I've been married for right. like 36 years. I know. So yeah, exactly. I am content in many ways. You know, I can be on the job for the longest. I'm content no matter what the situation is. I'm content because I know God's got my back. I don't care what it sounds like, what it looks like. I'm content. And that's just how he made me. That's just how he made me. So I think I'm that type of person is uh, that uh, when you're faithful with a little, God will make you rule over much. So, you know, that's my scripture. Because, you know, when he make, when He gives you something, and you, I feel like if you're not content, then you're not grateful. I guess that's how I look at it sometimes. If you're not content. But you just not hear what I just said, though? I'm just telling you. That's and, and, you were, and you were being a mouthpiece for me, too, mm -hmm. <laughs> putting all these words in me. But I, I, I'm, I'm grateful, very grateful. I know you are. I know you are. But I know it's so much more that we have to do in ministry, mm -hmm. to, so I can't be content there where right. we are now. I, hey, like I, uh, I said this before, and I'll I continue to say it, one thing about the ministry that, that God has blessed us with, mm -hmm. we that you guys in the ministry had to wait for the revelation. I moved in the, I mean, y'all had to wait on the manifestation. I moved in the revelation. Right. So when God said it, I believed it. And, I and moved. we got to wait till we see it, which right. is the manifestation. Not, I don't, that, I'm not that way. Right. I'm not geared right. that way. He said Unless he tell me now, don't get me wrong there again. If he he shows me and said, don't move on it yet, right. I don't move on it. Right. But I'm, I'm saying, okay, God, come on, come on, come on, win, win, win. Right. But exactly. and that's how that's how I'm that's how I'm geared. Right, exactly. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I thank God that we balance each other out because I am the one that's gonna pray it through, think it through, fast it through, and you be the one to be. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like, well, hold up. Just like when we were going to move down here, you like, God said. I was like, hold up. I haven't had a God moment yet. God haven't told me nothing. Well, I said, you better find it because I'm going. <laughs> we going to South Carolina. You, get there. Yeah, you better tell everybody we're about to go. So, <laughs> but yeah, it, but that's a good thing because that way God knows what he can entrust you with right. and he knows what he can entrust me with. And for another thing is if it's a certain time or a place we need to go, he'll show me in a dream in a minute. Right. Because... You dream once a year, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> whenever he tell me, whenever he has me dream, huh? right. I'm one like that. Right. I get exactly. to sleep, I'm gone. Exactly. You are out. You are out. So does size matter? That was uh, our subject matter on today, and I pray that God has blessed you and you got something from this message. I pray that. God has enlightened you on some things that you need to be content in every situation that you're in. But when you're in that situation, don't be ungrateful. Say, God, you're going to make me rule over the much because I'm being faithful with the little. Be faithful with what God has given you. Take care of what God has given you. You rent an apartment, rent a house. Take care of that apartment or that house that doesn't belong to you but somebody else. So when it's time for you to go buy your brand new house, he can bless you in an abundance because you've taken care of somebody else's property. And he says, hey, my son, my daughter, you ready? I, I'm ready to give you your blessing. So know that God hasn't forgotten you. Know that God knows exactly what you need. He's waiting on you to get ready so you can grab hold to it and hold on to it. No sense in giving you a million dollar home and you're not ready to take care of a million dollar home. Amen. You see what I'm saying? You understand how is bigger better? Are you ready for the big one? Will you be content when you get the big one? Know that God knows exactly what you need when you need it. And remember, there is no failure in faith. God will not fail you. He already, know, he already knows what you need, when you need it. How about you just grab hold to your faith and send up a prayer and believe what you pray. And stand on it. Stand on the word. Get you a scripture to apply it to whatever it is you're praying about. And use that scripture every day to send it up to God and say, hey God, it's me. I'm praying about this, this, and this. I'm praying about my health. I'm praying about my job. I'm praying about school. Whatever it is you're praying about, tell God, hey, it's me. I'm here. It's me. I got an answer that I'm seeking. I need an answer from you. I'm seeking from you, God, and only you can give me my answer. So here I am, God. 
today again. God's not nervous when you come to him over and over again. He just wants to see if you're going to stand still and know that he's God and wait until he does what it is he does best, meaning bless you in abundance. So, does size matter? I say yes. That's just me. That I say yes. Because, you you, off, wait a minute, oh. wait a minute. I say yes in the fact that you got to believe that God is a big God. God isn't a little God in a box. So the size matter according to who I believe in? Yes, I got a very big God. Does size matter when it comes to your faith? I say God will work with that small mustard seed. So does the size matter in that? No, it does not. But know according that God is bigger, according to me, know that God is bigger than any situation you're going through. And I know there's somebody out there today that needs God to show up on their behalf. God hasn't forgotten you. God knows exactly what you need. There's a Philip out there that needs God to answer a prayer right away. Philip, God is going to answer that prayer. Trust and believe. Hold your hands up and know that God hasn't forsaken you. God hasn't forgotten about you. God knows what you need, and he's going to take care of you. He said just trust and believe and don't faint, meaning don't give up. God knows who you are. God knows you by name. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He knows everything about you. All you have to do is trust and believe. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anything else you want to share? Yeah, I want to leave with you. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. All right. NIV. He said, he replied, because you have so little faith. So your faith got to elevate, folks. You got to enlarge your faith. Amen. And it goes on to say, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from there to here. I mean, move from here to there. And it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So, and what he's saying to us is, is that you can start off that small, the size of a mustard seed, but you got to enlarge yourself. You got to, you got to become a giant in the kingdom That's of God, right. a That's giant, right. a slayer for faith and all that. Your faith, your, you become so large, you can't fit in your house. Your clothes get uncomfortable for you. The chair that you sit in, you can't quite fit in there no more because your faith has outgrown that. All right. So we, we want to see some giants in this faith realm. So yeah. size does matter. Yes. I will size say does matter size in, does in matter. certain areas in your life. So mm -hmm. you got to be able to understand what it is that you need to accomplish for the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and how big you want to be in your faith. So that, that's what I want to leave you with. Amen. That because you have so little faith, things doesn't get moved quite like the way that you want it to move because you're stuck in that 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 small realm. Right, right. A small mindset. So what happens is our prayer life is even small because our faith has not elevated to the realm that God. You, you pray for things from God and God says that, that's something that you can accomplish on your own. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm the impossible God. So you need to give to me in prayer the things that you can't do on your own and let me handle that. Amen. So what I'm saying again, enlarge your faith. Amen. Stop praying from a, a lower level of faith. Amen. Get a bigger faith. Amen. That's God. good. That's good. I like that. Amen. Anything else? You're beautiful. You're awesomely handsome today, Thank as you. always. Oh, okay. There you go. Let me finish my <laughs> sentence. Let me finish my sentence, please, sir. You got any um, special news you want to share with everybody today? Yeah. Happy anyway, birthday, Aunt Bonnie. Happy birthday, Aunt Bonnie. The month of May, we're celebrating our ninth pastoral oh. and church anniversary here at that Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries in Blythewood, South Carolina. So we're excited. You know, I was talking about our ministry earlier today in, as we were talking. And we're celebrating nine years in ministry already. Amen. Started off small. God is enlarging our territory indeed. And William and Wendy Campbell Jr. call on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you will bless us indeed and enlarge our territory so that your hand will be with us that you may keep us from evil, evil and we may not cause pain. pain. So God granted William and Wendy Campbell Jr. what we requested according to 1 First Chronicles 4 and 10. 10. It's in Jesus' Jesus name, name we do pray and we thank God. Amen. 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 So I thank God that he's enlarging our tent pegs. He's enlarging our territory so that we 
can get to the people and let them know how awesome God is and what God can do for them and how God can bless them. We thank God that we have this platform that we can be a blessing to each one of you. And I thank God that y'all joined us on today. Our book of friends back in Akron, Ohio, our Perkins friends back in Akron, Ohio, wherever you may be watching us, we thank God that you joined us on today. Our Blythewood, our Columbia, South Carolina friends and family, thank God for you. Continue to be blessed. On purpose. For his purpose. Amen. Amen. Continue to walk in God's presence. Know that God has not failed you and he never will. Love you on purpose and for his purpose.